Hi, this is Professor Kristen Lems, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about spelling development of Spanish English language learners. And now I will share my screen. So this topic is factors that influence the spelling development of Spanish English language learners. I'm going to talk about four different ways in which uh, Spanish English language learners might learn to spell differently from native speakers of English. The first factor is the different way that sounds map onto letters in Spanish and English. We have different kinds of writing systems around the world. Some of them are more opaque and some are more transparent, and I will explain that to you. Secondly, we'll talk about the American flap. Third, the written representation of vowels in English versus Spanish, how they're represented within syllables, in diphthongs versus pure vowels, and in lax versus tense vowels or short, short vowels versus long vowels, and then implications for instruction and for assessment. The first one is the different way that sounds map onto letters in Spanish and English. This is often called opacity versus transparency. A transparent orthography or writing system is a system in which a language has only one letter to represent each sound or one sound to represent each letter. In other words, you, what you see is what you hear, what you hear is what you see. And Spanish is an example of one of the most transparent orthographies of all of the writing systems in the world. You can sound out a word, you can guess what it looks like when it's spelled. That is a transparent orthography. An opaque orthography is a language in which sounds can be represented by several different letters or letters can be represented by several different sounds. And I'm sure you can all guess that's crazy English. <laughs> English has a mostly opaque orthography. So we're talking about two different writing systems, even though they both use the Roman alphabet, one of them is much easier to decode and spell and write in than the other. And of course, the easier one is Spanish. So what are the advantages for kids who are learning literacy in a transparent orthography? Children from transparent orthographies learn to read earlier than kids from opaque orthographies. They're not just smarter, they also have a benefit from the language system. They have less trouble learning to read and spell and write, and they learn to read and spell in a different set of steps than children in opaque orthographies. And I'll show you some examples of that. Here is an example of how English speaking children learn to read and decode in uh, kindergarten. This is the system called Onset and Rhyme, and you can find this on YouTube where I found it. And now it's time for... Gawain's Word! Gawain's Word! <laughs> Excellent! Gawain here once again at Blending Fields, where two brave knights in armor will charge together at high speed and make a word! Competing today we have Sir... Ch <laughs> and on your right, Sir Ig! Ig. <laughs> Blend on, dudes! Excellent! That's Gawain's word for today! And this is Gawain saying, hope you liked our thing in the jig! See you next time on Gawain's Word! Gawain's Word! So this is a great way to teach children how English works, it's through the onset and rhyme system. So the j sound was the onset and the ig was the rhyme. I'll show you one more example of this in the English system of onset and rhyme. Another Gawain's word. And now it's time for... Gawain's word! Gawain's word! Excellent! Gawain's
Wayne here once again at Blending Field, where two brave knights in armor will charge together at high speed and make a word. Competing today, we have Sir w <laughs> and Sir Eep. <laughs> Blend on, dudes. Eep. 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 Weep! Excellent! That's Gawain's word for today, and this is Gawain saying, from deep in my armor, huh? I'll see you next time on Gawain's Word! Gawain's Word! Well, that system works very well for English, and it helps kids learn to decode a whole lot of patterns. But if you tried to apply that to Spanish, it would not get you anywhere because Spanish, being a more transparent orthography, uses a different system, syllabes, and here's an example of it. Kind of interesting because these are both designed for young children and they're both using the media of television or video whatever to uh, to entice the children into reading but you can see how much longer the Spanish word is for this very young child chocolate four syllables whereas with the onset and rhyme system they're just busy teaching a one syllable word that has four letters or even three letters so you can see that the advantage would go to the Spanish-speaking children who can decode sounds much more easily. Back to the PowerPoint. So here is a picture I took in a bilingual Spanish classroom where they were teaching children to read the word paloma or dove. And as you can see, it has three syllables. Each syllable has two letters. Each one is a consonant followed by a vowel. And it's very easy to break it into three syllables. That's the orange boxes. And then each of those syllables has two letters, which is those hanging light blue banners. So that's pretty, pretty uh, regular. It doesn't really work that way in English. So that's one big difference. The second big difference with, which affects spelling in Spanish English language learners is called the American flap. You may or may not have heard of the American flap. If you took linguistics courses, you may have. The American flap is a phonological phenomenon, which is a sound that we make, we Americans, for the letters T, 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 D, or D, D in these environments. They can be in stressed or unstressed syllables or between two short words, after a vowel or after the letter R, or between words in which the second word starts with a vowel. You may not be able to follow that rule, but you certainly will recognize the flap in these examples. Better, riding, party, little, it is, muddy, writing, said it, did it, pedal, waiter, get up. So you can kind of hear that that sound was the same. It's called a flap because your tongue briefly, quickly flaps your uh, soft palate. We have an awful lot of homophone flaps in American English. For example, waited, waited, faded, faded. Wedding, wedding, plotted, plotted, ladder, ladder, 
metal, metal, writing, writing. That's the only one that maybe has a touch of difference. Trader, trader, rated, rated, seated, seated. Now, those of you who teach first grade are saying, well, I don't say them the same. <laughs> and it is probable that when you're teaching the individual word and teaching kids to spell it, that you emphasize the T or the D and you don't use a flap. That is an instructional technique. But once we are using these words in fast speech, in normal speech, they will sound identical. And we will only know what the word is from context. These are common spelling errors that are made both by native speakers of English and by English language learners. However, in the case of Spanish English language learners, there's a special complication. Oh, let me do this for you first, just to give you another example of, of, of the flap and how much fun we have with it in English. It's the uh, Merzidotes sound song. Mazy dots and dozy dots and little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey to work and chew. Yes, mazy dots and dozy dots and little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey to work and chew. If the words sound queer and funny to your ear, a little bit jumbled and jivey, sing mares eat oats. And little lambsy divey, a kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? Ooh, ooh. A kiddly divey too, wouldn't you? You get the idea. It's awfully cute and like every language this is a lot of fun and it sounds like it's a lot of nonsense words but what it really is is a lot of flaps. Now in Spanish the flap sound which in English is represented by those T double T D or double D in, instead it's represented by the letter R. R. And here are three examples of Spanish words that use the letter R and that have the flap sound. Pero, claro, numero. This is not so much for Spanish words that begin with an R and certainly not for the double or rolled R, but these words have the same sound as the American flap sound, but they use the letter R. Therefore, Spanish-speaking children who are learning to spell English words will often put the letter R in the place of the flap sound. So can you decode this Spanish-English language learner's spelling? Yes, it's beautiful, beautiful. You see the flap there? But this kid's spelling it with an R. How about this one? Seri, seri works perfectly if you're reading it in Spanish. And of course, this one's very common, didn't, didn't. This is a common miscue in spelling of Spanish English language learners. And the reason is because they are hearing the flap, but they're representing it with the letter R, transferring it from their native language understanding. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, the third factor, is how we represent vowels in English and in Spanish. In English, there are many silent vowels, as I'm sure you know, when we learned, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, when two vowels go walking, the first one does the talking, which is true sometimes, but not always. However, in Spanish, every vowel is pronounced and gets its own syllable. And the exception is with the QU, the K sound as in K, or the GU, W as in guacamole. So for those two uh, exceptions, when there's a U after one of those two letters, 
it uh, is not pronounced as a separate vowel. But when you look at a word like K-I-S-S-E-D, when a Spanish English language learner is learning to pronounce that word, their native speaker knowledge would convince them that they ought to pronounce this as a two syllable word, kissed. Why? Because they see the vowel E and they figure that ud should be its own syllable. That's smart and it would work in Spanish. Another factor is diphthongs. Long vowels in English are actually not one vowel sound, but there are two that are written with one letter. For example, the long A sound is A. -E. The long E sound is E. -E. Long I, I. -E. Long O, O. And long U is U. Now, you as a native speaker of English are not used to hearing those two different vowel sounds, but if you're teaching English language learners, it becomes very important because Spanish English language learners will hear the two vowel sounds and try to represent both of them in writing. Also, since Spanish is transparent, Spanish speaking learners go through a different progression in learning to spell and they stay on the letter name stage longer because it works for them in Spanish. So in spelling English words, the Spanish letter name like A, A, E, O, U will often be used to represent the sound of an English word. So for example, you might see feel spelled F-I-L for the word feel in English, F-E-E-L, because E in the letter F-E-E-L, when children hear that, it sounds like the alphabet letter E in Spanish, which is the letter I, but they would say E. Same thing with take. Instead of a long A, they will write the letter E because they go A, B, C, C, D, E. So the letter E in Spanish is pronounced as what we would call the long A sound. This can help you understand the nature of some of the spelling miscues of Spanish English language learners. Try to read this out loud. This is taken from the Huddleston, Huddleston book, Evaluating Reading, Evaluating the Reader. It's a sample of writing from a third grader, a Spanish speaking third grader in a transitional TBE program. So I'm going to read it out loud. You're probably reading it to yourself. What I didn't understand was that Helen always kicked and screamed. It was very strange. How did she get blind and deaf with just a fever? It was a really strange fever. And she even graduated from college and they named a boat after her. <laughs> so you can tell that this is a story about Helen Keller. and. If you look at it, you can recognize many of the developmental spelling stages here. Some of them look like the same stages that English speakers, native English speakers go through, and others look different. And here's kind of a list of them. So the sound level and the pattern level would be the same for a native speaker of English. For example, putting the WH and a TH because the kid knows that there should be an H in there somewhere, but they're not sure where it goes, so they figure they'll put two of them. <laughs> or uh, kicked, or the K, they're not sure if uh, the K sound is represented by the letter C or by the letter, letter CK. So they, they know some rule, they're just not applying it yet. But look at all of these words that show the Spanish effect. Always. So instead of A-Y-S, the Spanish English language learner hears the vowel sound I from Spanish. Didn't, which we talked about earlier. Really, same thing with the E. We would call it the long E sound in English, but it's spelled as the letter I in Spanish. Strange, because the J sound doesn't occur in Spanish and that's the closest thing to it. Same thing with even, you can see the letter I once again representing the long E sound. 
the word boat, which doesn't need a silent letter after it because that's a long O sound in Spanish. And then chust, same thing as strange. It's representing the J sound with the closest thing they know in Spanish, which is the ch, ch sound. So these are important because the kinds of spelling miscues you will see in Spanish English language learners doesn't look the same as native English speakers. And it's really important when we get to words like this one, didn't, because it would be very easy for a teacher who did not know this to say maybe the child has a hearing impairment or a learning disability, whereas it's just transfer from Spanish. So what are the implications for instruction and assessment? Do not assume the child has special needs, learn what the common substitutions are that come from the Spanish phonological and orthographic system. And this is the book in which many of these ideas are shared a book that I'm the first author of, Building Literacy with English Language Learners. And then I also have a list of other places that you can read more about this topic. So you can download this video and, or you can copy this page. Thank you very much. And I appreciated talking to you. Take care. <laughs>